I think it should be. However, so I'm not going to read the description. I'm going to read the level uh, level three clearance required. You're gonna as soon as I say its number, you're gonna understand why. SCP-1000, aka Bigfoot. Oh yeah. Document Alpha 1596-1000, missive from Director Jones. You've you've probably heard the rumors before now. Everyone about without the clearance level to know better wants to get their dig in. Did you hear Sasquatch is an SCP? Are we going to capture and contain Bat Boy next? Yes, SCP-1000 is Bigfoot. I'm sure you've snickered. Don't worry. Contrary to rumors, we don't actually assign you to Keter duty for finding something humorous. You think Bigfoot is funny because we want you to think Bigfoot is funny. We've bankrolled Hollywood comedies and are for cyclical documentaries, paid off men in gorilla suits, perpetrated hoaxes with bear prints and goat fur, bribed and brainwashed cartoonists to get especially silly depic depictions on children's television. Even the term Bigfoot comes from us. Planted in the media in 1958, a term people would find even harder to take seriously than Sasquatch. Why? We'll get to that. The information in the article that you've already read isn't entirely true. There are two direct lies, and plenty, plenty of lies of omission. There is no such thing as, a, as the anomalous pseudo-disease referred to as SP-1000-F1. SP-1000 does not possess a magical death aura. In fact, SP-1000 does not directly exhibit any anomalous effect whatsoever. We also lied about SP-1000's intelligence level. SP-1000s aren't chimp level smart, they're smarter. To be precise, they are exactly as smart as us. And that brings us to the, to the Elias of a mission. That's what this letter is for. The Elias came from me, so I figured the truth should come from me as well. This is a story we got from the Children of the Sun, who defected to us. It's a story we didn't believe, refused to believe at first. As you've already read, the apes we call SP-1000 evolved alongside us. We walked in the daytime, they walked in the nighttime. Our nocturnal siblings in the shadows. But while we were wandering hunter-gatherers, they changed. Like we would a few thousand years later. Tools, weapons, agriculture, domesticated animals, Stable sediments as humanity blinked in the uh, Pleistocene sun, SP 1000's population exploded across the night. They blanketed the planet in the tens of billions. They made things that we still can't comprehend, even though we th thoroughly studied the surviving pieces, organic technology. They made trees and birds of prey grow into fast-moving ships, herds of animals that became trains, bushes that became flying vehicles, from insects and pigeons they made things equivalent to cell phones, televisions, computers, uh, atomic bombs. The children described the vast shining cities stretching across glaciers and penetrating the deepest caverns, groves, grown sky ships of ivory and spider silk, Creatures tending them with hundreds of blinking eyes. We were rare, like gorillas now, a few hundred thousand left at best. We avoided their settlements just like wild animals today avoid ours. SP-1000 understood we were intelligent like them, but avoided us just as we avoided them. Saw us as fairies, as gnomes, ascribed us supernatural powers as we ate bad children while they slept in daylight. They fenced off their dwindling wild populations and conservatories, outlawed poaching, but in the underground consumed our bones as as, as uh, drugs. Oh. No <laughs> kind of drugs. <laughs> the good Save kind. There. 
No, no penguin, no penguin. <laughs> it's, it's the dolls kind that some men pay for uh for oh. things. Well, men and women. Yeah. Well, women typically don't take those. Well, but, yeah, anyway, uh, along with the SP, then their civilization fell, and we did it. By we, I don't mean the foundation. By we, I mean humanity. The story is muddy. Supposedly, a trick trickster force god showed humanity favor, showed us the master's tools and how to use them. Why we did it, we don't know. Perhaps they hu hunted us. Perhaps we were simply afraid. Perhaps it was just that they fenced us in unintentionally or not. We simply don't know what the truth is. Somehow we acquired SP-1000's own technology, and with it, we instigated an SK-class dominant shift in which humanity became the dominant species of Earth. We wiped out 70% of SP-1000's population in a single day. The Day of Flowers, the children called it. Supposedly, every flower bloomed that day while our enemies died in their sleep. Then we hunted the rest down, but we went further than just killing them. With a few of the more twisted of SP-1000's devices, we drove the survivors mad. Even those hiding behind our reach, we trapped them in their own minds, lacking higher functions and leaving their bodies to fend for themselves like any ordinary ape. We slaughtered their living machines and burned their fast shining cities, uh, cities with SP-1000's bioweapons that reduced everything to slurry and dust that washed or blew them blew away in the spring rain and wind. We left no traces, not even our own memory. We turned one of the weapons on ourselves, wiped out any knowledge of SB-1000, and the greatest civilization the planet has ever seen. Only a few humans protected themselves from the effect. We kept the forbidden knowledge just in case. The rest of us went back to being hunter-gatherers, none the wiser. Which brings us to today. You're going to read all about this in the level 3 documentation, but I'll give you a short version here. SP-1000s are somehow regaining their forgotten intelligence and knowledge. Maybe they never truly lost it. We don't know. This is why the ever-increasing number of Bigfoot sightings is so worrying. Why the attempts at contact, however indecipherable, are even more worrying. Yes, SP-1000 are just like us. That what makes them so dangerous. We wiped them from history and memory. We dissolved their civilization and we slaughtered most of their species. Just ask ourselves, if they got the chance, what more would they do to us? And as in Log 1000 AD065-X1, the following is a rough translation of recent SP-1000 attempt at communication with Foundation personnel on Redacted. We forgive you. Given choice for now, not forever. Let us back in. And that's SCP-1000. I thought this was going to be a joke. What the fuck? Yeah, that... It didn't say it didn't anywhere. I know, yeah. but like, it's Bigfoot. Jesus Christ, that's... That's a thing. Yeah. I think it would be a continent issue, but not XK or like anything like that, because I feel like if they wanted to, they could, after regaining themselves, they could wipe out humanity. They just wouldn't wipe the planet out itself. Yeah. Well, so, yeah, but XK class includes dominant shifts like that. Oh, that's fair. Then XK, XK, okay. I guess my big, like, my big hesitancy is the fact that if the stinking SCP Foundation were to actually take them in, take them up on their offer, I feel like they wouldn't do that. Well, I think with the let us back in, it goes for, like, all of humanity, not just the SCP Foundation. Well, yeah, that's the point. That SCP Foundation would have to reveal, "Hey guys, Bigfoot's real." Oh, also, 
humans committed the most overt act of genocide in all of existence. Also, Probably shouldn't have said the Jenna word, but... Yeah. Also, no. I do believe that there would be an SCP organization that would take them in. Yeah. The Serpent's Hand. Because they already do oh, take yeah. SCPs in. Uh, yeah. And, it, like, if I remember correctly, there was, uh... Weren't there cases where, um, not cases, wasn't it a commonly passed around idea that some of the serpent's hands weird ass fuckery was actually sourced from the original 1000 civilization? Yes, the children of the sun were technically defected serpent's hand members. Ah. Uh. So, point being, if the Bigfoots just want to be treated like equals again, uh, we should. Because other, not only just because it would be a morally good thing to do, but because it, like, they could be an existential threat otherwise. That said... What's the likelihood of the SCP Foundation actually revealing the existence of this thing? Or some other organization revealing the existence of the Bigfoots and all of humanity just going along and understanding that they need to make repar reparations for literally also, driving... Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I think I think it is XK, just because humans are so fucking stupid, even with the SDP Foundation, they're just going to make the same goddamn mistake again. Yeah. Yeah. Very strong. I mean, the thing is, if they actually wanted to go with humanity, they, sh they should have, instead of contacting Foundation, they should have contacted the Serpent's Hand. Well, they, the reason they contacted the SCP Foundation instead of the Serpent Fan is probably because they want to reach a rational input, a rational, they want to be rational before they go extreme. Yeah. Yeah, plus, like, the SCP Foundation, like, if they go to the Serpent's Hand, the SCP Foundation has a long history of, at the very least, being able to manage shit that the Serpent's Hand does. So it would be more likely for them to actually get a response from the SCP Foundation to some capacity. Either way, yeah. I, I, e the, the moral of the story is humans are stupid and we'll doom ourselves again. Congratulations. <laughs> isn't, isn't it fun to delve into fiction? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Yippee! All right. Next SCP is is gonna be the tapeworm child. Oh, what, what? the what? That's that his was nickname. My, that was my that was my nickname in kindergarten. I'm kidding. Anyway, SCP one thousand uh one uh, thousand three dash one is an adult tapeworm of the species that uh, Angiococcus granulosus. Known for causing hydatid uh, disease. Like others of its species, SCP-1003-1 inhibits the smell small inhibits the small intestines of carnivores, where it produces eggs that are passed in the host's feces. And the eggs can survive up to redacted years in, in the outside environment. When the eggs enter the gastrointestinal tract of the human subject via consumption of contaminated food, they hatch into larvae, which burrow in the host's tissues. It is at this stage that SP-1003's anomalous properties begin to manifest. Instead of developing into cysts, the larvae develop into creatures which resemble human embryos. The vast majority of SP-1003-2 specimens die before they have the chance to develop those that 
that survive are usually those that are embedded in nutrient-rich tissue, such as hepatic tissue. As they develop, they absorb nutrients from the surrounding tissue, which often causes problems for an intermediate host. SB 1003's 2 developments mostly follows the pattern of normal human prenatal development, but at a faster rate. By eight weeks, it is as mature as a three-week-old neonate. Or fuck that means. Uh, although it is similar in size. That's development for the human fetus. Ah, okay. Although it is similar in size to a eight-week old embryo, once it has reached a stage, it will actively consume the intermediate hosts from within using sharp cooked teeth. SP-1003-2 growth is accelerated to an even greater extent as it is doing this, but at the time it is fully consumed the intermediate host, it will have developed into a child. The critical age of the child typically ranges from 10 months to 11 years. Depending on the mass of the intermediate host, though in extreme cases, it can be as high as 13 to 15 years. Once SP-1003-2 is finished, it will lose its hooked teeth along with cannibalistic tendencies from where on it'll, it will be functionally indistinguishable from a human in every respect, with no knowledge or memory of having been, been a parasite. It will even possess learned skills that would be expected of a child its apparent age, despite there being no way it could have learned them. Instances of SP-1003-2 are usually taken into orphanages and sometimes adopted by foster parents. Their only anomalous properties at this stage are that their DNA is somehow still identical of that of Echinococcus granulosus, and that their body fluids contain tapeworm prosolex, which infect carnivores and develop into SP1003-1, thus continuing the cycle. This one's just yucky. I mean, I guess certain groups, I can't see that, like, going, infecting every human or making anything big, but, oh, that's... Well, at the same time, if all of their bodily fluids has those eggs, mm -hmm. um... Ever ever heard of uh cholera? Isn't that the disease like where you shit yourself a lot? Effectively, yes. And it was passed primarily by tainted water sources. Yeah. Point cholera being is literally where the body is infected and thus uh it tries to expel the infection. And it's not just uh Meat bowel means that it does that. It, there's also vomiting. You yeah. can die of dehydration or a number of other reasons. Yeah. yeah. Point, point being, this would effectively be a parasitic version of something like cholera. Oh. And, oh. Why do you have? Why did you have to use that? Oh. Well, it's the first disease I could think of. Water, like <laughs> contaminated water, like. Granted, it's less likely <gasps> ways to die. Well, listen, I'm primarily talking about the means by which it can spread, not like okay, that's fair. Point being, I'm... like, like uh, overall, it's going, uh, I would probably argue that it's a worse way to die because you literally get eaten from the inside out by a, by a tapeworm baby. But point being, I think that uh, its level of deadliness largely depends on where this stuff shows up at. So, for instance, if this shows up in rural Africa, oh. that's going to cause significantly more damage than if it shows up in New York. Yeah. Because any humans that aren't aren't tapeworm babies 
will get infected with the tapeworm babies and then will grow up to be tapeworm babies and then it, it, it keeps going until until all until all of the humans in the area are now tapeworm tapeworm humans and it's the like thing... the stanley parable the end is never the end is never the end also yeah. it, it it's never stated that it's been contained yeah like so i think that this <sighs> Honestly, depending on where it shows up, I, I would put it in country. Well, I can go back and see if it if it's stated where it's at. Yeah. No, I accidentally whacked my 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 donkey. My poor donkey. In what game? Minecraft. Oh no! Not the donkey. Yeah, you, you ever just be trying to dig a hole and then suddenly you're beating your donkey around with a shovel? No. I don't Minecraft. think that's a common thing, to be honest. Listen, listen. Minecraft. I just got sniped by a child. Well, using a custom man. goo tube, which why mm. why why the goo tube? Oh! Uh, you find Should anything, Bray? Hold on, I found a place, and it's called Bio Research Area Thirteen, but it doesn't say like site. So hold on. See if I can find the sites. Well, I mean, point being, I tend to want to judge these by the maximum potential damage they could do. And as such, I think, yeah, I think I think country is appropriate. Yeah. Okay, I'll I'll go with country. Like at worst, like in rare, con like a rare condition, possibly continent, but like that's the worst case in uh, scenario. Really, it's not yeah. worst case after all. Think how common it is to take kids on airplanes. Ooh, that's true. Yeah. Let's not think about that. Yeah, let's not think about how COVID spread. Ah, uh, COVID. Oh God. I still can't believe they fucking. Ah, hold on, I got it. Mass. It's off in planes. this. The uh, they're mainly in the Ruby Mountains, Nevada, USA. Nevada. Oh. No one lives I in Nevada. A lot of anti maskers there. Oh. No one what do you, Nevada. child? What do you mean? No one lives in Nevada. Have you heard of Las Vegas? Oh my God! Wait, you're right. Are you fucking kidding me? I thought it was in New. <laughs> No way, I'm thinking of Idaho. What? what? <laughs> it is almost midnight. <laughs> okay. So, point being, <sighs> luckily, this thing is primarily at a place that would have a likely better handle on dealing with it. But I still think that worst case scenario, like, if it just spontaneously showed up in Africa. Yeah. Like, like place it in, say, Uganda or Zimbabwe, like places that have a lot of I'm not convinced okay. that Nevada would be that good since it's so close to California. No offense meant, it's just oh, California really handled the virus very badly. Well, oh. yeah, but the main the main thing that I'm getting at is this effectively seems to be spreading in the same way that either an STI or contaminated water. And modern infrastructure within the United States generally is going to have a significantly better time dealing with such things. Well, yes, but also through bodily fluids, that means sneezes. Oh, true. Yeah, I get. I guess effectively we would have to figure out how uh like like the same way that we know that COVID can be on water droplets up to a certain size, we would have to find out 
uh like how how much basically we would need to find out how big the eggs are yeah uh, that was a really grody thing to say but yeah all right because i feel i feel like i feel like uh i mean granted tapeworm eggs are probably close to microscopic in size but they're still like when looking at the size of something on a microscopic layout level they're pretty fucking big so i still think that a, a, like a place where people are more frequently going to be drinking bottled water and tap water that has gone through a strict uh cleaning process will be less affected by something like this yeah yeah, yeah, I'm agreeing with punk, uh, with uh, country. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, next SCP. Uh, SCP-1009 is an anomalous area of land, approximately forty-five by thirty meters, and irregularly shaped. This area will expand, converting all foreign material surrounding it. Two further areas of SP-1009 chemically and structurally irrelevant, uh, irrelevant to their original materials and structures. SP-1009 expands at a rate of 0 0.8700 meters per hour. Growth of SP-1009 may be entirely restrained by loud noises. Any sound over 60 decibels will stop growth in the immediate area. Currently maintained with mechanical speakers, but voices, instruments, and natural noise are all equally effective. If entirely unrestrained, SP-1009 would break containment entirely in 3.45 hours, co uh, cover 4.044 square kilometers in 24 hours, and expand to 1,000 kilometers after 26 days. The environment within SV-1009 appears natural, but it not composed of Earth-like flora or fauna for a complete environmental analysis. Uh, see document uh, 1009 AIE-40. In general, flora is bright non-Earth-like colors and is larger than most Earth flora. Analysis of bi biota indicates the area is equivalent to a forest. However, neither invertebrate nor vertebrate animal life is naturally occurring within the area. There is no effect on humans entering SP-1009, allowing the taking of numerous samples and measurements. And as for Addendum A, SP-1000-A is a corpse of an unusual creature found in SP-1000, the night. SP-1009-A was seen exiting the area and was shot by a guard who has been reprimanded for his hasty actions. The creature resembles a squirrel or monkey with large ears and appears to be a mammal. The body is currently stored in a Site-8 deep freeze and may be requ requisitioned for study from Dr. Light. And there you go, that's SP-1009. Mm -hmm. Oh. How large did you say it could get in that like final estimation? Oh, uh, it can expand to one thousand kilometers after twenty six days. Twenty six days, one thousand kilometers. So that would be about uh between a fourth and a third of uh the width of the United States. Bestest, why are you laying on my controller, you goon? Yeah. But weirdly um, enough, it doesn't affect humans. Yeah, like... Let's just speak entirely, uh, Frank. Like, barring... Hey, Frank. Shut... I have to. No, you don't! It's funny. No, it's not!
Uh, Just destroy anyway. the child. You're saying? Point, point being, even if this thing completely stretched across the entire world, judging by the fact that people can still go onto it and seemingly, I, I'd be willing to guess that they could probably grow plants on it. I feel like it would just create a really fucking boring Earth. I think the biggest impact would be on animals, primarily, specifically water-based animals. Okay. Because... Actually, the, the picture of the forest they give is actually very pretty. Hold on. Yeah. Right. And even then, like, barring that, I think that humans would survive this. And more so, I think that, uh, actually, let's just be entirely frank. This thing, like, if you were to take this and just, like, plop it down on, like, a desert area, this could actually be a benefit to humanity. Because I'm willing to guess that these weird-ass trees would cycle out co2 so this thing could literally be used as a as a dampener for global warming <laughs> but besides that even more so like this like i don't think it would ever get out of containment because it's so easy to contain yeah it's the same basic thing as the light bulb stopping the fucking statue wait what what is 60 decibels though um, let me go check. Okay. So, I mean, if it's something like a clap, that's going to be really sad. <laughs> just Everyone said... just claps their hand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it just stops. Let's see, 60 decibels. Give the forest a panic attack. Yeah. And if you want, like to see what the forest looks like, I posted a picture. In stream planning. 60 decibels example. Yeah, sound. A sound's loudness is measured in decibels. Normal conversation is about 60 decibels. So what we're having now is, is 60 decibels. Yeah, we could literally just have a bunch of people with ADHD hang around this thing, and it's not going anywhere. <laughs> Constantly play uh, fucking Africa by Toto. Yeah, we've got a uh, normal conversation is about 60 decibels, a lawnmower is about 90 decibels, and a loud rock concert is about 120 decibels. Yeah. Plop this down in a KISS concert, and it's literally mm -hmm. twice as loud as it needs to be. Yeah. <laughs> also, Hatchet, if you'd like to see, I'll post the picture of, of the forest and stream planning. I'm gonna go check it. Oh, that is pretty. Yeah, it is. Either way, pretty. yeah. Either way, yeah. Point being, uh, I can with this one, I can kind of understand why it's Keter because, like, if left out of containment for a good long while, it'll get really fucking big. But right. it's like its level of containability is about on par to this fucking sixty watt bulb stopping the stupid ass Terminator. Robot, fucking hell, I hate that thing. Why is that thing a keter? Hey, at least this SCP could be a benefit. <laughs> yeah, so I, I would advocate for spood tier here. <laughs> it's not going to get out. It's probably not going to kill too many people. And if utilized correctly, it could literally help dampen the effects of climate change. I fucking hate Datatron. What? Shut up, Dragon. That's the platoon player. No one cares. Uh, Jerry, by the way, uh, I think your mic's fucking up if you've been trying to talk. No, I haven't been saying anything. Ah. Okay. Yeah. Bestus. Actually, you know what's actually funny? <laughs> this next SCP could could probably, they can probably put this, the, the forest SCP right next to this and it's, it'll never move. Ever. Let me ask the loud SCP. Yep. 
SCP-1012 is a chord consisting of five sound tones, designated frequencies A, B, C, D, and E. The tones of SCP-1012 are frequency A, 415.5 Hz, with the range of human hearing slightly higher than, than, uh, than G. Where, where did G come from? I don't know. Anyway, uh, frequency B, redacted kilohertz ultrasonic. Frequency C, redacted hertz infras infrasonic, lower than the range of human hearing, but observable at higher intensities in the form of vibrations. Frequency D, redacted kilohertz ultrasonic. Frequency E, redacted hertz within range of human hearing, but rarely used in a chromatic musical scale. The generation of one or more, but less than all of the constituent tones of SCP-1012 does not result in anomalous effects. The simultane simultaneous generation of all five tones of SCP-1012 for a duration exceeding a few second seconds affects the resonance of certain subatomic uh, particles within range, causing them to disintegrate into their constituent elementary particles. Peter modeling predicts that a generation of SB1012 within close proximity of a mass, such as an astronomical body, is likely to result in an uncontrollable chain reaction, resulting in the dis disintegration of virtually all matter comprising the mass. According to the model, once such a chain reaction is initiated, it will continue to progress whether or not the tones of SP-1012 are continuing to be generated until all available mass is affected. In parentheses, a C-class scenario. Proposals to use SP-1012 or a modified version as a defense mechanism against hostile extraterrestrial threats, including SP-1548 and SP-2838 have been rejected due to the pot potentially disastrous side effects of SP-1012 testing. And there you go. It's So it's just a very loud thing that occasionally disintegrates things. Yep. Cool. Like, like I said, the forks wouldn't be able to move. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but it also probably get disintegrated. Yeah. That's weird. My question is: Has they tried this thing on the indestructible lizard? No. Yeah, it's about uh, the second I said that, I thought, "Wait, do we want the indestructible <laughs> lizard to adapt to disintegration?" <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, either way, um. Like, is this thing easily movable? Uh, as far as I know, it's stationary. Uh, then I'd say certain groups. Certain groups. Although I have to say, though, I would prefer if the indestructible lizard never went near it at any point. Yeah. Like yeah. The risks of the indestructible lizard becoming disintegration proof kind of outweighs the chance of disintegrating the indestructible lizard. <laughs> In my humble well, opinion. You run, also, sometimes when you try to destroy him with certain objects that seem so certain they'll destroy him, he somehow not only lives, but becomes temporarily so much more dangerous. Yeah. Oh. Also, uh, Hatchet might also like this SCP, too. This is the Cockatrice. I... Does that turn people into stone by looking at, at it? Well, or is it? Yeah. I think it's a basilisk. No, I'm thinking of the cockatrice. Maybe. I think it's either the crow or a stare. But it turns people it can turn people into stone. Well, let's see if they actually put that in this SCP. So that's what's next. 
SCP-1013 appears to be a small reptile with a, with a distinctly avian head. A wide frill extends from the base of the head and can be flared out via bo bony spikes radiating through the frill from the neck. The body, the body appears similar to most common reptiles, with the exception of the head and abnormally long tail. While the main body is only 60 centimeters long, the tail is nearly 121 centimeters and exceptionally flexible. SB-1013 has been observed to use this tail to, to trip and distract large prey. The head of SB-1013 is distinctive, appearing to be that of a male chicken on first viewing. However, SB-1013 does not possess any standard avian markers besides the superficial resemblance. The beak is serrated and appears to possess a very basic needle-like teeth. These are used only in feeding and are not used in any way to hunt prey. The head also lacks any feathers and has an enlarged wattle. SCB-1013 hunts by projecting a form of unknown radiation, wave or mimetic force, into prey, uh, prey items making eye contact with SCB-1013. Subject report a sudden stabbing pain in most major muscle groups with full paralysis setting in within three seconds. This paralysis continues for eight minutes until full recovery after ten. Paralyzed subjects are then bitten beginning the calcification process. Research into, into this effect is ongoing as no form or, of venom or viral agents have been detected from this bite. However, this contact will initiate a rapid change in cellular structure in the bitten subject. The outer skin tissues will begin to rapid cal calcification, growing very dense and inflexible over several minutes. This will extend from the point of contact on outward across the body and can calcify a human being within 15 minutes. Subjects recovering from paralysis mid-calcification report the, the feeling as extremely painful with a burning numbness in fully cal calcified areas. This calcification extends approximately 3 centimeters into the body, leaving most internal tissues undisturbed. Calcification does not appear to affect the eyes, mouth, nose, or other ma major nucleus membranes. There is no currently known ways to reverse this process. SCP-1013 will peck through the outer layer of hardened flesh, and begin to consume tissues from the inside, burrowing deep in, into the body as flesh is consumed. SB-1013 has a voracious appetite and will consume nearly twice its body weight at each feeding. SB-1013 will only consume living tissue and will ignore dead or decomposing flesh. SB-1013 has been noted to use natural body openings when available and is capable of compressing its body to fit into very small openings. Prey, prey items often die from blood loss or mass internal damage before feeding is complete, leaving the remainder of tissues to decompose within the calcified tissue. This outer tissue will slowly break down, causing large sections to crack and fall free. This will expose muscle and internal tissues, which are then often predated upon by SV. 1013. SB 1013 will sometimes wait for his process to begin before feeding. And there you go, that's SB 1013. I think I can speak for everyone here when I say this. What the fuck? <laughs> well, Why it's... in Merp way it is? I will say, Hatchet, this is technically a cryptid SCP. <laughs> Is the burp the way that it is? You change much about the cockatrice besides the fact that it's supposed to have the legs of a chicken as well, not just the beak. Why is burp the way that it is? Who angered it's the not burp? Really burp. It's it is it is weird. It is burp like. Technically, well, the head isn't. Technically, the head isn't burp. really a chicken. They they stated as not. It's only similar to one. Yeah, in the mythology, you get a cockatrice by uh, having a leg that, uh, not leg, an egg that's laid by a rooster 
and you incubate it. Now, I was going to say, I, I don't know if this generally would fall into cryptids, because I don't think anyone in modern day, or even in near modern day, uh, actually so believes. Exciting. I see. Wait. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. The, the last sighting was in 1537. Yeah, that's... Uh, damn, I don't know that. Yeah, generally speaking, uh, a cryptid, like, I think even the oldest cryptids come from the 1700s. Mm -hmm. Or maybe 1600s if you're gonna, yeah, maybe 1600s with the Beast of Jevodon. Yeah, so right around there. Well, it was Either close. Way, <laughs> yeah, like... What were you? We, what are you saying? Where do we put this thing? Uh, it's more dangerous than anything that would. It's... Well, from what it looks like, since the foundation is testing it, it means we have it in containment. And it's. I would like... say group. It it doesn't seem it's dangerous, but it's not exactly roaming free. Yeah, yeah. it's it's an end it, again like. I think pretty much any individual uh, hunting creature will end up in certain groups because, like, like they're fucked up, and I don't like 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 they're 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 creepy and bad, but they have a limit to their capabilities. Yeah, mm -hmm. and my cat is attempting to eat my cord. Why? It hungry. Feed it. <laughs> How dare you starve your cat? I feel like we literally have three cat bowls of food in different parts of the house at all times. If he's hungry, he can go get food. Cats always Some hungry. They have food. They want your food, not their food. But this is... I don't... I don't eat my cords. He's trying to eat my controller's cord. Yeah. I am not a goat. I am not a goat. I do not eat anything I see. Awesome. I grew up around cats. I know they don't make sense all the time. Awesome. I know. Also, this next SCP, I'm not sure if it's making fun of SCP-1013, but it's called SCP-1013-J. Wait, uh, 1013's the thing we just did, right? Yeah, that's the cockatrice. SCP-1013-J is composed of most, if not all, members of several species of genus uh, Sororus, mainly the Eastern Gray Squirrel, the Fox Squirrel, the Red Squirrel, and the Western Gray Squirrel. Members of SCP-1013-J are significantly more intelligent than are widely believed, and are suspected to be carrying out a plan to take over the world from a mass underground arboreal a complex. Okay, yeah, this is totally making... Ar arboreal. Arboreal complex. Most details of this plan have yet to be uncovered. However, uh, reconnaissance agents have been reported widespread combat training with a variety of weaponry and martial arts. Because of the unquestionable un presence of SB-1013-J around human habitation, a dedicated mobile task force Zeta-0 also known as Fuzzbutts, has been established to provide reconnaissance of and, when necessary, a conduit for communications with SB-1013-J. Membership in Zeta-00 is currently res restricted to members of Canis Lupus Formularius and Felis Cactus. Proposals to expand membership of Zeta-0 Zero to other species friendly to humans are currently under consideration. Then there you go. The squirrels are planning a revolution. So we're sending in the cats. And dogs. And the dogs, yes. Can this be anywhere other than spooked here? <laughs> There's something spooked would like to hear if they weren't downstairs listening to music. You must.
Thanos sends people. I kind of want to see the squirrels take over the world. I'd love that. And the best part is, is that this canonizes that all of these species of squirrel are actually an SCP. <laughs> Any squirrel you see is actually immediately thinking about bringing your downfall. Even the squirrels <laughs> that were literally beating the living fuck out of each other in my neighbor's yard. Yeah, they're probably doing that to get your guard down for the sniper squirrel that was on the roof. <laughs> what? What did it shoot at me? A fucking acorn? Uh, probably. <laughs> I don't even think there's like that many acorns in Florida. I want to know where the fuck it got it, and if it was an invasive species. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's a maybe it's a walnut. I don't, I think don't we know have what those in Florida. Either. Do you go in Florida? No, I don't. Except for lionfish and gators. Do you know the difference between an alligator and a crocodile? Uh, vaguely. You're on the spot. Uh, Tell me what's the difference. Let's see, if I remember correctly, uh, primarily the shaping of the teeth. Like, no. the teeth Maybe? splay out in a different manner I'm for crocodiles sure it's... than alligators. Well, also the snoot. Oh, yeah, the snoot as well. Though... Yeah, not there. Snoot. Well, there's a lot of like there's a lot of crocodilians with different scenes. Have you ever seen a gharial? <laughs> a what? Those things are fucking weird. Yeah, gharials are weird. Yeah. Okay. It's, a, it's a it's it's a crocodilian that I believe lives in Africa, right. and uh, their, it, not, their mouth look special. It, yep. it basically looks like someone took an alligator, except they cut off their their snout and replaced it with some weird ass pencil. It's the best way I can describe it on the spot. Yeah, <laughs> really fucking weird. Well, also, this next yeah, SCP, crocodile. Uh, like I always do with all SCPs, I proofread them a little bit to make sure Dragon can hear it. And I'm starting to think it's going to be like, oh, what's the worst thing possibly happen? Like, SCP. <laughs> I swear, it's a joke, too. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Please, I'm going to read... The fresh water so they should pop up. Yeah, I'm going to read a special containment procedures as well as description, because it's hilarious. Special containment procedures. Plan 1040 Omega is to be implemented as soon as possible by ways of Foundation Fund Society of Concerned Parents. After implementation, it is to remain in effect perpetually. Description. SCP-1040-J is an effect first documented in 1998 that has spread in the scope from the early 20th, 20th century onwards to now affect the vast majority of adult humans in the United States. Subjects under the influence of SCP-1040-J are beholden to a complex internal logic that, to this date, has defied all attempts at analysis. They will repeatedly display behavior harmful to themselves and others, the scope and severity at which constitutes a keter level threat. Left unchecked, SV1040-J has the potential to cause an A-class end, end of civilization scenario. Oh my god. <laughs> It's just America. <laughs> this is it's just... America that literally destroy civilization as we know it. Well, yeah, but it's just the sentiment of America. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you... like that. Why is some of the joke SCPs the most powerful? <laughs> I mean, there's nothing really stopping it. Yeah, we've yet to be able to stop it. <laughs> We're trying. Okay, who would win? This SCP or the squirrels? This SCP this dragon. SCP. <laughs> what you okay. okay. The, I the know question, the squirrels will win. The, dragon, the question you just asked is which will win? Copious amounts of firearms and explosives <laughs> versus squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, but you do you know the superhero squirrel girl? She would die. Squirrel girl isn't a squirrel. 
I know, but do you know her power? She has defeated fucking Thanos by herself and her squirrels, but still. Well, that's cool, but we're not talking about Squirrel Girl. We're talking about Squirrel. Just the basic squirrels. Yeah, now, granted, human there's intelligence. A... Now, granted, there's oh, there's yeah. a hell of a lot of them, but I dare say that an entire army of squirrels could be taken care of with a single tank. Actually, squirrels are so fast that you wouldn't want to try to take them out with tanks. You would just want to a... minigun. I feel like that would even be too slow. Uh, squirrel. I've seen squirrels my entire life. They're fast. They're flexible. They know how to avoid people. This is a good question. I bring and up a good question. You're like, oh, tanks are good. slow. Exactly. Well, at the same time, tanks are slow. But what's a fucking squirrel going to do to a tank? <laughs> um, crawl into it and chew the person that's inside of it to pieces. You that can is... enter a tank via squirrel. But the tank also can't destroy the squirrel. I feel like the squirrel would run out of gas. The, squ the squirrel would run out of gas? No, the tank! You, said, you said the squirrel would <laughs> run out of gas. <laughs> yes, that's what you said. That's not what I meant to say! They All have right. their acorn ration. Okay, hold on. I got one other thing, and it's a message from the, uh, a member of the O5 Council. Special instruction. The remains of Dr. Der Derrickson's Corvette are to be removed to disposal area o 056 b and crushed. Also, if anyone knows of an area body shop that does quality work on vintage roasters, I would appreciate the tip. 059. America's gonna doom us all. This is why are some of the joke SCPs so fucking powerful? Like I understand there... regular ones, but a fucking joke. Because there's nothing like stopping them from being, you know, overpowered and shit. It's like, oh, haha, this is a so, joke. No one. Takes care. So we should we just put this right next to the other joke SCP? That's I mean, it already says it would end civilization if left unchecked. Well, yeah, but it's not a ZK. Yeah, it'd just be an XK. Well, what if they created UFOs and shit? Well, we don't CK even is the end of reality. Yes, reality. <laughs> oh, oh no. Oh, okay. Um, I'm gonna do something real quick right now. A uh, warning. Uh, this SCP has a talk about something that is. Not okay with some people. You might want to click off for a sec. <laughs> uh, that does describe a lot of things. It's That's SCP ten forty eight Builder Bear. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Now oh. you you know what I mean. You know what I mean now. <laughs> if you don't like the idea of seeing an ear bear, get out of here. I wasn't talking about that one. Oh wait, yeah, oh yeah, oh oh yeah, the baby. Oh fuck the baby. Wait, actually, what? What there are you What do you mean? There's a lot of fucked up shit in this SCP, okay? Yeah. <laughs> anyway. On with this SCP. Again, you might want to click off if you're not Okay, with some really gory shit. <laughs> That's more descriptive. There's a lot of there's a lot of things. The main thing I was thinking of is uh, the bear that was made out of human ears. Some, <laughs> no, well, not just the human ears. Then there was also the bear that was made out of a woman's fetus. Yeah. In other words, the bear performed a very terrible abortion, <laughs> and then How made the baby. Yeah. MX6 could not help her. Yep. Yeah. On. Oh. Anyway, on to this SCP.